Hey guys, it's Chris Cease with Not The World Fly Fishing here. I'm uh, going to show you how to tie today an M4 streamer, which is one of my favorite streamers and most productive ones that I use for both freshwater and salt. Uh, in freshwater we catch largemouth bass uh, as well as catfish and smallmouth bass on it. They would also catch trout too. Uh, in the salt water uh, we catch a lot of stripers, redfish, flounder, and sea trout on it. And we're actually going to tie the chicken on a chain colored M4. Uh, right there you just saw a purple version of it. Uh, here it is again just so you can get another look at it. Uh, we're going to tie a chicken on a chain version which is the most popular color we've got in the Chesapeake Bay. So um, what we want to do is go ahead and start with a Mistad 34007 is the hook that I usually use for it. Very common saltwater hook. Uh, this is a size 1. You can also use a size 2 or a size 1 aught, 2 aught, whichever size you want to go ahead and do. You're going to need some medium lead eyes. Uh, we're also going to need some Magnum Stripped Rabbit in olive for this color combo. Uh, you're going to need some Pearl Palmer Chenille. Uh, a bucktail. Color doesn't really matter. We're just going to use a little bit of this on the front side. Um, and then you're also going to need legs, which I've got some spinnerbait legs here, as well as some flash. Specifically for this color combo, we're going to use copper, black, and red uh, flash. So go ahead and put that hook in your hook shank there. Uh, excuse me, in the vise there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to use orange threads. This is easier for you all to see uh, what exactly I'm doing here. But I'm going to go ahead and get this started uh, towards the front of the fly and tie these eyes on. I want to leave a little bit of room on the front side uh, for these eyes so you can tie down in front of it and make a head on the front side of it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put these on with some X wraps. If, you've, uh, if you're getting new into fly tying, tying these eyes on very tight is important so they don't spin while you're fishing. Uh, if you tie them too loosely, they will move around and make the fly act uh, not as it's supposed to. So I'm using 210, uh, excuse me, this is a Danville's 210 Denier flat wax nylon. You can really crank down on this stuff. Uh, if you do break it, it's okay. You just tie back on and keep going. Uh, but going to go ahead and set these eyes on very tightly so they don't move. And then I'm going to go ahead and move the thread on back to about the middle of this hook point here. It's right where the bend starts. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is take this uh, crazy glue that's brushable. Go ahead and brush this on those thread wraps on the eyes. Uh, and what that does is just kind of locks it down and seals it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put this back. And then what we're going to do first thing is go ahead and get some of this hair that's on the front side in the middle of the bucktail. It's this dark strip. And we're going to go ahead and get just about the size of width of a pencil and go ahead and clip that out. This is not very commonly used hair, but I really like it for this pattern because it's the exact same length you want. It also uh, is a little darker color to kind of imitate that lateral line on a fish. Um, and this is the perfect hair for just separating the legs from the tail of the fly, the, the top edge of the, uh, of the rabbit there. So you're going to go ahead and go a little bit past the length of the shank. Uh, probably one and a half is what you want sticking out back. Go ahead and you can wrap this all the way down. No need to clip it off. Uh, you're going to go ahead and this will actually make a little bit thicker body so you can just go ahead and wrap all the way down on the butts of that hair. Go ahead and bring it back. We're going to go ahead and get some of these legs going. Uh, generally what this calls for is chartreuse uh, legs on the bottom side. I'm going to go ahead and do some chartreuse with these orange tips just because it's kind of looks cool here, matches this orange thread a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use about eight legs on the short end of this spinnerbait uh, fly. You could use the long end if you wanted to. It's kind of what I've got left, but that's about the perfect length right there. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this off. And I'm going to go ahead and tie these right in at the butts. Make sure I get two loose wraps and then tighten down. And they will be secured there anywhere from, uh, you know, eight or ten legs, six, eight, ten legs, that's fine. That's going to give us some action on the bottom end of the fly. So again, usually use chartreuse. This is just a chartreuse with orange tip. Uh, the chicken on a chain is olive pearl with a chartreuse tail and then the flash color in it again is copper, black, and red. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and then tie in uh, the tip of our Palmer chenille to create, the, excuse me, Jumping ahead of myself there. Got to go ahead and put the flash in. We're going to spin this hook around. Sorry about that. Uh, put that hook in, and then we're going to go ahead. And I'm going to start with the black. Uh, I'm just going to take a 
piece or two of this uh, out of here and go ahead and kind of double it up. Um, clip that and get about four strands of black to go in. I'm going to tie that just kind of around the hook point and then flow it back. So there we go. We're going to go ahead and get some copper. I'm using the uh, Krennic, I believe is what it's called. It's the stuff in the Crelix fly. This is just kind of some cool looking uh, flash. It's a little different here. I can see that I've cut some short, so I can use that right on top. So we go ahead and put that in around the point again, just kind of on both sides of the hook, so it's going to be flowing out the back there. And the last thing we use is red as well. I've already got a couple pieces of red crystal flash laying around that I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and clip these. So I've got uh, a couple on each side of the hook shank that go around the bend and the points as well when I tie these in. Okay, so got my flash all tied in. I'm going to pull it out here real quick and just kind of pull that back. Give it some of that look. Excuse my squeaky voice. I need to oil it up here. All right. So again, all the butts can just be kind of wrapped down because they're all going to get covered up by this body here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and tie in a tip of this Palmer chenille again. This is really cool stuff. You can also use, if you like, uh, EP, EP uh, brushes, the tarantula brushes are really good on here. Um, you can wrap those around. Uh, the other thing is you can use just regular uh, ice chenille works too. I really like this stuff. It's a little bit longer fibers. kind of flows back a little bit better. Um, so uh, you can go ahead and start wrapping. One thing that I do like to do on occasion is to, if, I, if I'm fishing with saltwater fish where they may tear this fly up, is go ahead and again take some of the super glue kind of run it over the top there and what's going to happen is this stuff is really going to make a tough body for this chenille um, and you got to be careful just go ahead and pull some of these fibers back don't get your fingers in that glue but we're just going to go ahead and wrap and keep on wrapping back you don't have to use the glue again if I'm fishing for salt water uh, they you know if I get a pile of fish they may tear this fly up I just want to make it last a little bit longer uh, but if I'm fishing freshwater, generally I don't use the glue. You don't need to. Um, bass, smallmouth won't necessarily tear this thing up too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this all the way up. I've got it up behind the eyes. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I move my thread uh, to right up behind the hook eye there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a couple X wraps around the lead eyes. And then I'm going to do a couple wraps in front of the lead eyes towards the hook eye there. And then we're going to go ahead and tie this off. So you've got a nice body there that's flowing back uh, of this Palmer chenille. Uh, this stuff looks fantastic in the water. Gives it some flash as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and kind of pin this uh, these fibers on the front back. So that kind of gives us that nice looking body there. Uh, and then what we're going to go ahead and do finally is take the rabbit strip, figure out which piece you want to use, and we're going to want to go ahead and make it probably the length of about that hair, maybe a little short of the flash, so right about that long. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip this off. Okay, so I've got my strip, and what I want to do is determine exactly where I'm going to tie in, which is about here, and then where that point of it being impaled on the hook shank goes. It's going to go impaled actually on the point and then down onto the bend. So it's going to be right about there is where it's going to be at the bend is where you want to make sure that you are putting it on the proper place. If you do it too far back, you won't have the ability to tie it in. If you do it too far to the front, you've got a bunch of material sticking out and you've got to clip off and it's going to be too short on the back. So I went ahead and impaled it. I'm going to take that fly out of the vise again, my squeaky vise. I'm going to go ahead and stroke it back, put it back in, wrap down on the front there of that rabbit. I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess. A few of those uh, 
chenille fibers as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and just wrap all this down, make a nice neat little head here. You can see this orange head I've got with this thread. Okay. And then I use an old school whip finisher. You maybe use a new school one or use your fingers. Go ahead and whip finish that off. Cinch it down, clip. And then again, I go ahead and use some more of the super glue. You can also use the uh, hard as nails uh, if you'd like. I use the crazy glue. It just kind of really seals deep down in there and makes those thread wraps super tough. So if you're dragging off rocks, uh, in cover, oyster bars, anything like that, if the fish are really beating the fly, but if you're catching a bunch of them, it'll make it last a little bit longer. Uh, something that's definitely good for if you were guiding and using these flies. Uh, but that is it right there, the chicken on a chain colored M4. Uh, sticking that flash out so you all can see it with those uh, hot tipped chartreuse legs. That fly will catch a lot of saltwater fish. Good luck in tight lines. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.